بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد اي لهبت في الله الله سبحانه وتعالى clarifies for us in the akhsha al-ibadi al-ulama that the most god fearful of the people is the ulama the scholars of islam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem fa'lam annahu la ilaha illa Allah wa sallam li dhanbik Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and know annahu la ilaha illa Allah verily that he is uh, annahu la ilaha illa Allah that there is no god worthy of worship except Allah wa sallam li dhanbik and seek forgiveness for your sins so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encourages us with ilm and knowledge of the religion. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man bihi fi deen. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the religion and ilm. The ulama mention in regards to this hadith that one of the things that can be understood from this hadith is that those people who Allah does not give uh, some wisdom and understanding of the religion, Allah doesn't want good for them. Mafhum mukhalif, meaning the opposite is implied from this hadith. So the hadith states, whoever Allah, uh, whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the religion. Fiqh fi deen. So the person who's not given fiqh fi deen is not receiving the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلَكَ May Allah protect us from ignorance. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Ahabati fi Allah, one of the things that prohibits this is sinfulness. Sinfulness prohibits us from attaining knowledge. If you fear Allah, Allah will give you knowledge. And taqwa habita fillah, we mentioned on countless occasions, it means, as some of the Salaf defined it, it is adhering to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoiding His prohibitions. This is taqwa Azza wa Jal. So by gaining taqwa, this is a means to gaining ilm. Allah will give you the knowledge if you fear Him. When we don't fear Him, we don't gain that blessing of taqwa. We don't gain that blessing of knowledge, of ilm, and the practice of that knowledge. Ahabatifillah. It's not sufficient enough just that we go seek knowledge or that we study in the universities or wherever the institutions or what have you because that fiqh fi deen is from Allah that tawfiq and in my personal experience I've seen it in my life and I've seen many people who've went on the path of knowledge have studied in some of the greatest institutions that we know of of ilm in this time or at least great places I've seen many students come and go out of Yemen in some of the Marrakesh of Sunnah in the time of Shaykh Mukbil bin Hadi al-Wadi'i Allah yar'amu and some of them didn't have the tawfiq even I look at myself and I see how little knowledge I was favored with because of my own sins and my own weaknesses that I didn't get the tawfiq maybe I didn't have the sincerity but Allah gave me something to where at least I'm still trying to seek knowledge. I'm still trying to remove some of the ignorance from myself. And I've seen those who Allah favored who amongst my colleagues who Allah favored with a lot of knowledge. Walhamdulillah. And tawfiq to be strong students of knowledge. Walhamdulillah. And I've seen those less than us. Those people who Allah did not give tawfiq. Some who are so weak they, they became not to backbite our brothers but some became you know, sinful people who had the opportunity, they met great ulama, some even apostated from the religion. 
In the case of one particular individual, he became a spy for governments and advertises it all over the, the, the media and wants to get paid and compensated for his spy work. I knew this man in Yemen. This man knew Sheikh Muqbil bin Adi al-Wadi'i. So he didn't have tawfiq from Allah because he became an open munafiq hypocrite. And Allah knows best his situation. Ahabatifillah, the point I'm trying to bring up is the importance of sitting with the ulama and the importance of never severing those ties with the ulama even though we hear some dua in this time saying I want to sever the ties between you and the scholars because we want to bring you to, this, to these supposed scholars in America وَعِيَذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ جَاهِلٍ the danger of this is and we see this in the case of these particular individuals that they begin to believe themselves to be suf sufficing the, the, their communities without the ties to the ulama to those great scholars those scholars whose beards became white from teaching and learning and disseminating and practicing ilm and fiqh fi deen. Those mountains of knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet sallallahu wa sallam mentioned that they are the warath al-anbiya, that they are the inheritors of the prophets. Because it isn't from the dinar, it isn't from wealth that you inherit. To be that inheritor, you inherit ilm, that path of struggle and sacrifice. I say this because by Allah I've seen it countless times. And you will see this. And as the Prophet said, You're going to see many differences. Then it's upon you my sunnah. That we see so many of our brothers, they gain a little bit of knowledge and then they sever their ties with the ulama and they begin to make fatawa and got, misguide themselves and misguide others. And they begin to come up with new aspects of the creed which are not legislated by Allah Azza wa Jal. New understanding of Islam that was not legislated by Allah wa Rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And new ways of understanding the religion that was not known to the, our Salafana, Salafana Salih, Ridwan Allahi alayhim. And they begin to come up with really strange statements. And you can tell a difference, and I've seen it countless times. I'm telling you, there's so many people, and I'm not going to name names. I see so many people are so popular on the YouTube and so popular in lecture circles. People want them. But you can tell a difference between those who have sat with the ulama and those who haven't. And it's not always just in their level of knowledge, because maybe someone didn't sit with the ulama, but they memorized a lot. Or there happened to be... Uh, they happen to know the Arabic language or be blessed with the Arabic language or be born Arab and they know the language. But they don't have the tawfiq and they don't have the tawfiq of that great ni'mah of the ilm to where they can know their own limits. And this is the point I want to make, Ahabitifillah, is that we have to know our limits. Don't talk about issues you don't have the right to talk about. Even as du'at, even as students of knowledge, you have to know your limit. And this is... When you see people who either didn't study with the ulama or didn't study much with the ulama to get some tarbiyah or they only listen to tapes of the ulama that you see that more often than not not on all the situations but more often than not you see them yukhti akthar min yusib or yukhti wa yusib kathalik kathir that they make many mistakes and they get things correct or sometimes they make more mistakes than they get things correct because they don't, they don't have the tawfiq of being with the ulama. The ulama, you, you learn a lot of things you don't learn in the university. And I've seen, I've had university students ask me and make comments that were so strange. They graduated from Jama'a Islamiyah or they were in their last year of Jama'a Islamiyah. Kuli ta hadith, kuli ta da'wa, kuli ta fiqh. And some of the statements, you can see the khalal in their durus. MashaAllah, they got good grades and they benefited tremendously. But because they chose to only study in the university and not take advantage of the ulama, great ulama that are there in the haram, 
great ulama all around. The ulama are literally surrounding them as if they're surrounded by Apache warriors and they're being shot at with El. But they avoided it and they stayed only in the universities. And so then they didn't, they found, you find some khalal in their, their studies. You find some great gaps in aspects of their knowledge. Things that we take for granted because we were sitting with the scholars and we heard it countless. Even if you hardly knew the Arabic language or you were weak in, in such and such or you didn't study here in this institute or that, but you heard it so many times you were able to get some of the duabit and the criterion from the ulama and some of the conditions. Why? Because just for the fact that you sat there and you listened countless times with various scholars from Ahl Sunnah. And that, Ahabat al you only get with the ulama. So, two pieces of advice I want to remind myself of and my brothers and sisters in Islam, aside from the conditions of having your deeds accepted, of having ikhlas lillah and following the sunnah, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa but also when it comes to seeking knowledge, seek knowledge from the ulama of Ahl sunnah And when it comes to giving da'wah, know your limits. Know those things you can talk about and those things you don't have the ability to talk about. If you haven't studied an issue, then don't even go into it. Say Allah knows best or I'll, I'll try to find out from the scholars. But to instead from your own ijtihad and you're not ahlan for ijtihad, this is where we make a lot of mistakes and by Allah I've seen even some good students of knowledge that I know, but they're making big mistakes because they're, it's like they've distanced themselves from the scholars. And maybe... They think they're, for whatever reasons, they're not going back to them. And they're not making going back over those books and those usul. Once you get away from the usul of Ahl Sunnah, you, you're destroying yourself. And you're going on a path of destruction. And you'll be destroyed. Look at those people we see now who are calling. They have thousands of people around them, so it makes them feel good and comfortable. They're popular around the world. But they're literally destroying themselves. And only Allah knows what their ending will be. They're destroying themselves because they got away from the usul of Ahl Sunnah. So, Ahabati Fillah, adhere to the madhab of the Salaf and adhere to the scholars and take your knowledge from the ulama. Read, study, go to the institutions, wherever you can seek the knowledge. But at the same time, you have to study with the scholars of Ahl Sunnah. Because as the Salaf used to say, men. كتابه شيخه فضال وكما قال وكما قيل The Salaf used to say, this is a, 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 a statement known to the Salaf, the one who takes knowledge from books, uh, that the books are their scholar, is one who's misguided. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد.